most of the breathalyzers use infrared spectrometry for qualitative analysis and identification of ethanol. Infrared spectrometry. Yes, this process uses infrared radiation to identify the compound. But how can radiation help to identify the compound? Well, this is the topic we're learning today. Ah, wow, I'm really pumped up to learn how this actually works. Let's get started then. First, what do you know about infrared radiation? Let me recall. I've studied this in physics, and infrared radiation is the radiation whose frequency lies in between visible light and microwaves. Correct. Infra comes from a Latin word which means below. So this radiation has a frequency below or less than that of red light in the electromagnetic spectrum. Got it. In fact, we had built a small remote control car using infrared signals for our physics project. Wow, that sounds fun. Yeah, it was. So teacher, what other uses of infrared are there? Besides remote controls, IR signals are also used in optical fibers, security systems and thermal imaging cameras which detect people in the dark. And not to forget, it is also widely used in chemistry. Ah, uh, yes. Like the one in breathalyzers, right? Absolutely. One of the main applications of infrared radiation is it's used to detect the functional group in organic compounds. Wow. Using radiation to detect compounds is pretty cool. Yeah, it really is. Now, let's see what happens when molecules absorb infrared radiation. Hang on. Uh, let me guess. Since radiation means energy, molecules vibrate with more energy, right? Exactly. This energy interacts with the bonds in organic molecules, causing them to vibrate. And we can see two possible vibration effects. Mm, what are they, teacher? In the first case, there is a stretching vibration where the bond length increases and decreases. While in another case, there is a bending vibration where the bond angle increases and decreases. I see. So there is continuous oscillation of the bond length and the bond angle. You're right. But do note that we only consider stretching vibrations while dealing with infrared spectroscopy. Got it. The stretching vibration of a bond is like the oscillation of a spring. To get a better idea of it, imagine a pair of atoms joined by a covalent bond. They should look like a ball placed on each end of a vibrating spring. Ah. The bonds can vibrate with different amounts of energy. Hmm. Does that mean different bonds vibrate at a different frequency? Exactly. The frequency of oscillation depends on the masses of the atoms bond length and the strength of the bond. Lighter atoms give higher frequencies, whereas heavier atoms move more slowly and thus give lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. Similarly, stronger bonds vibrate at a higher frequency. Got it. The frequency of a bond varies according to its strength, length and mass of the atoms. You got that right. However, do note that simple non-polar molecules like hydrogen gas and chlorine gas do not absorb infrared radiation. So, does that mean we can't test the gases like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen using this technique? Yep, it works only for polar molecules. Ah, understood. Now, back to our topic, infrared radiation. When radiation of the right frequency is supplied, the bond can absorb energy and vibrate with a greater amplitude. Most bonds absorb energy in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Hmm, that's why we specifically use infrared frequencies? Exactly, and each bond, such as the CO double bond, as well as the NH and OH bonds, absorbs a particular frequency within the infrared region that allows them to be identified. I see. So the NH bond absorbs a frequency which is different to that of the one absorbed by the OH bond. Indeed, and we can tell which frequencies are absorbed by looking at the infrared spectrum. Here is an example of a typical infrared spectrum. Hmm, teacher, it looks like some sort of health report we see in hospitals. <laughs> yeah, but it's clearly not that. Now, I want you to be attentive. 
we are going to interpret this IR spectrum.